Hey guys, so this is a set of examples of using basic derivative rules and finding different types of tangent lines. So I just want to show you the, the three types of problems. So I have three very different problems that are very typical problems that get asked in a calculus class. So I wanted to give you a good breadth of different ways that this could be asked. And I want you to kind of get the sense that anytime you see the word tangent, it should really be indicating to you that you need to take a derivative somewhere, okay? So you can pause the video to read the examples if there's a specific one that you're trying to watch or see, but otherwise let's just jump right into it. So starting with the first one, so find the, tan find the line tangent to y equals 4x squared plus 3 that has a slope of 16. State the point that this occurs at on the graph and also state the equation of the tangent line. In some ways that's a little bit redundant to say that, but this is, this is actually giving us a lot of information. So the word tangent needs to just be screaming at you that you need to take the derivative. Before you do anything else, take the derivative. In fact, if you have no idea what to do, probably take the derivative. So in a calculus class, especially when you start working on derivatives, every single problem you should be taking a derivative. Now, the next part of this is dealing with the information in here. So a tangent line that has a slope of 16, this really requires that you understand what the derivative means. So the derivative is the equation for how to find the slope at a particular point. Now, this is going a little bit backwards. We're actually told the slope that we want. So in this case, what this means is I actually want to set my derivative equal to 16 and then solve. So if I solve for this, this is pretty simple to solve, right? This would just be x equals 2. So this is actually the point that has a, this is the point where the tangent line on this curve will have a slope of 16. So this is saying first to state the point that this occurs at on the graph. So you want to keep two things straight. This is the, a point where this occurs at. So where do you plug this in to find the x, y coordinate? You don't plug this back into the derivative. This is talking about a point on the curve. So this is the curve and this is the derivative of the curve. So you have to keep those two things straight. So I need to plug this into this function here. So if I want to find my point, I'm going to take y equals 4 times 2 squared plus 3. And then if I solve for this, so let's see, that's 4 times 4, which is 16, um, plus 3, which is 19. So the point that this occurs at on the graph is going to be 2, 19. Okay. Next, let's find this tangent line now. So the whole thing about a tangent line is that you need a slope and a point. So here's my point. Now what's my slope? My slope was given to me, right? My slope is 16. So we have everything that we need to make a line now. So the equation of a line is this point slope form. It's point slope form. You always need a point and a slope and we've got all that information. So this is going to be y minus 19 equals 16 times x minus 2. And then you could put this into um, slope intercept form. So let's see, this will be y minus 19 equals 16x minus 32. So then ultimately I get uh, 16x minus 13. So there would be my tangent line. So does this make sense what this is actually saying now? So I've got this, this, uh, let's, let's just review everything here. So I have this graph, I have this point, and I have this tangent line. Let's just take a quick field trip to confirm what this all means. So here we are at desmos.com, which if you watch my videos, you know that I love using Desmos just to help kind of tie material together. So this black line here was our original curve, 4x squared plus 3. And now let me just label here. So this point here, this is 219. So that was the point that we found kind of through our work. And so now check out this. I've got this y equals 6x minus 13. So this is what we said is the, the tangent line. So if we did this right, it should perfectly go through 219 and, and be a very clear tangent to this. And boom, there it is. So if I zero in on a little bit, you can see that it just grazes that one point on the curve and then keeps going. So we, we nailed it. So whenever you're not sure of what you actually just solved, I think a lot of times just looking at a graph is a really helpful way to kind of tie all this information together because it is kind of strange concepts that we are dealing with. 
So on to the next one. So slightly different question. Find the equation of any tangent lines parallel to the x-axis for f of x equals x cubed minus 4x squared plus 4. So once again, we see the word tangent. You better take a derivative first. <laughs> so this is going to be 3x squared minus 8x. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just factor out x because that might be helpful in a little bit. And so now we have to think about what do we need to know about this tangent line or what information do we have? So this is talking about tangent lines parallel to the x-axis. So what does that mean? So here's my x-axis, right? So what would be a line parallel to it? It would be this. Okay, so now you have to think about what do you know about this line? Well, you should really be thinking about slopes here. So what is the slope of a horizontal line? It would always be zero. So a line that is parallel to the x-axis will be a horizontal line, therefore it has a slope of zero. So it's a question that sounds more difficult than it, than it needs to be if you kind of know what it's asking. So if I want to figure out, so remember this is not my tangent line, this is how I figure out the slope of any tangent line. So if I want to know what tangent lines have a slope of zero, I need to set my derivative equal to zero. So this is going to be x times 3x minus 8 equals zero. So there's actually two points that this works at, right? x equals zero and x equals 8 over 3. So those would be my, my two points where I would have a tangent line that's parallel to the x-axis. So now I have to find my two tangent lines. So do I have my slope? Do I have my point? Mm, almost here. So I know my x-coordinates, so I actually need to figure out the y-coordinates. So if I plug 0 into the original function, the point here would be 0, 4. And then if I plug 8 thirds into this function, well, to be perfectly honest, this comes out to kind of a, a goofier looking number. So 8 thirds, when, when I just write this in decimal form, we'll call this um, 2.67. And then rounding the decimal, this comes out to negative 5.48. So we'll just use those points. So now I actually have to find two different tangent lines, but I know the slope. So what's the slope that I need here? The slope was zero. So this is our M and we're gonna have to just find the two different lines. So I'm just gonna set them up in this case. So I use my point slope form. So the first line would be, if I plug everything in, this would be Y minus four equals zero times um, x minus zero. I guess I can actually pretty easily solve this. So this would be the line y equals four. And then the second tangent line would be, so if I do this again, this would be y plus 5.5, 5.48 equals zero times x minus 2.67. Totally doesn't even matter what that is, right? Because this is just gonna be y equals negative 5.48. So those are the two lines that are tangent then to um, ta tangent to this curve and parallel to the x-axis and you can use graphing software to just confirm that like I showed you with the first example so now moving on to the last one so this is kind of a tricky question so find the equation of a line that is tangent to the curve f of x equals e to the x and goes through the origin okay so first things first we got to take a derivative here but this question is actually a bit tricky so this goes through, the, we are told that this goes, yeah. <laughs> we are told that our tangent line has to go through the origin. So think about what that actually means. So that would mean that if I have this, this point slope form, I know one point that is definitely part of this, right? Zero, 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 zero has to be part of this. So I can actually use that information here. So this is gonna give me y equals m, x. So here's the form of my tangent line, but I have to figure out what m is. Now, this doesn't mean that 0, 0 is a point that's on my curve, right? So if you think about it, so think about what the actual graph of this looks like. So e to the x looks, uh, this is kind of crudely drawn, but here's, here's just a quick e to the x. So what this is really talking about is having some tangent line that goes through the origin 
So it's a tangent line that's going to look like this. So just because we, so we know zero zero is on our tangent line, but zero zero is not on. Is, it just cannot possibly be on our actual function. If you plug zero in for this, you get zero one. So I have some idea of what the actual tangent line should look like if it goes through zero zero, but I, I still need some more information to figure this out. So the thing is in looking at this tangent line, so let's pretend that this point of tangency here, so I don't know what this is. So I'm just gonna name this point of tangency. I'm gonna name this point A, which means then if this is a point that's on my curve, if I plug A into this function, then this coordinate is A comma E to the A. All right, so here's where we're now going to start kind of bringing this all together. So I know I've got this point A, I, and I'm going to plug that also into my derivative at some point. But I have to think about how can I relate this now to kind of the, the actual slope that I know for the tangent line. Well, I can think about what I know about just slope in general, right? So in general, slope would be found like this. So we've already used just some information here um, to help us build a line. We can also use some information that we know to help us build a slope. Okay, so I know one point for sure that I could include in my slope formula, right? It would be zero, zero, just like we used it for the point slope form of the line. So the other point then, this y2, x2, I'll use this dummy point that I've created here. So if I plug in now this, this information, e to the a minus zero and a minus zero, I get that the slope of this line has to have this form e to the a over a. And I also know that if I were to plug in, so let me, let me erase this now, let me erase all this. So I've got this dummy point e to the a. This should be equal to the derivative then at a. So if I take this slope, I know that this slope now should be equal to the value of my derivative at e to the a. So now look at what I've actually got here. I have created in here an equation that I can totally solve. So if I go ahead and just kind of, let me get rid of all this. So now if I multiply both sides by a, I get e to the a equals a times e to the a, oops, e to the a, and then I can divide both sides by e to the a, so ultimately I get the a equals one. So my a equals one, which means then that my e to the a is going to equal e to the one, which just equals e, and so then this is also going to be exactly what my f prime of one is, that is also e, so that is equal to my m. So now I can finally plug in a slope for my tangent line. It's going to be y equals e times x. So there's my answer. So that was kind of a, a, a trickier one. And so that'll cover what I've got for this particular video. If you have other questions, you can always drop them in the comments. I'm always reading. Um, so thanks for watching, guys, and I'll talk to you next time.